All right, so gold right here since uh, 2010. This is a chart from 2010 monthly chart, and gold actually spiked up from 2010 up to 2012, and it created like a double top uh, formation right here like this and afterwards it went all the way back down right toward up to this pin bar right here and now gradually it's coming back up for now so this is kind of the retracement right when you think about the retracement for this uh, downtrend right here the market is kind of retracing back up to the middle point here it's a little bit over like 50 percent Yes, uh, let me just place a Fibonacci line here. See exactly what percentage the market is. Actually, yeah, it's in between 61.8% and 50% level. So the market might consolidate for a while uh, within this range and it's gonna go up or down. But the scenario will be if the market actually breaks this 61.8% level upwards, then most likely it's gonna go towards the 100% retracement because when you think about it, there is a horizontal line in this neckline here, right? Which is almost at the same price as this 61.8% retracement. So this price of uh, 1575.84 is going to be the last stand for this retracement. If the market breaks this line upwards, then there is a possibility that the market is going to be retracing 100% to this highest level. That will be one of the scenarios, like a macro scenario of next year. And let's see. I just got this drawing tool. It's it's really nice. <laughs> Anyways, another thing that you can look at is probably in this kind of momentum, Ichimoku Kinko Hyo is not really working because it's horizontal. Uh, just by looking at these lines, it's not really uh, reliable at this moment. Even if the prices are above the Kumo here, look at the angle of the Kumo. It's horizontal, right? So pretty much it's in a range still. There is no trend in the market. So in this case, I wouldn't touch this market just based on this monthly chart. So let's just go to to the weekly chart here if i look at the weekly chart here let's, all right so on this weekly chart what we can see is a pretty much steady bullish momentum right unlike the monthly chart kumo is moving up like this kijun sen and tenkan sen are also gold crossed and moving up chiko span being breaking this recent high upwards right here so this is exactly like three positive signals in ichimoku kinko hyo it's called sanyaku koten in japanese clearly in weekly chart on this gold uh, the market is bullish i'm gonna look for where to buy on the market i will look for a trading edge on the market to buy in this momentum so in this case i will look at this weekly chart and also break it down to like daily and one hour chart and I wouldn't look at the monthly chart for now. And this one right here is actually the stochastics. I use the stochastics too. Um, and when I look at it, this is not really giving any signals right now. Well, actually, this one looks like a little bit of a divergence here. If you look at the price level of these two tops here, right here and right here. If you look at this stochastics right here, it's almost in parallel, right? It's horizontal. So even the price is moving up, the stochastic shows it's not really moving up. So this is kind of the divergence that it might be the case that the price is going to the downside from this price level until the next uh, the gold cross here right next time i wouldn't touch on this market if the price actually keeps going down maybe it might touch this kumo here and it's gonna be supported here and the price might go up afterwards that will be one of the scenarios and also if it's going to be retracing again if you take the fibonacci retracement from the lowest price to the highest price here it might retrace back to 50 percent level to uh to this price level or it can go down to like 61.8 percent so that's something that we can also expect that could be one of the scenarios so anyways um next year i don't know if the market moves like stably then it might be creating some range still uh, for a couple of weeks a couple of months and it's gonna break uh this uh, recent high upwards sooner or later and that will be one of the scenarios here but in that case, we're going to have to always watch out for the retracement, right? If uh, the retracement is going to be happening to up to this Kumo here or uh, down below to this 50% uh, level or down to like 61.8% level retracement. So 
But anyways, the rule is to actually have to wait until the trading edge on the market, which I was actually talking about on my previous live streaming on Mental Forex Live. You have to wait for the trading edge on the market. And so in this case, I'm gonna only look for the place to buy. I will just wait for the pushback for the market next year in January and place a buy accordingly. All right, so in this daily chart here, all right, let me ask, is this a trend? Uptrend, downtrend, or range? Which one is it? Wave theory and cycle theory also always make me confused. <laughs> yeah, it takes time to master it actually. But once you start to see the time cycles and also wave and also the price observation theory, then you, you don't need any indicators. Actually, all you have to do is you look at the price action and also those wave theories and combine them together. And actually, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to show these like all five lines either. If you master all these like three theories, I tell you they are the best. Well, wow, thank you so much for saying that. I try my best. Because of Ichimoku, I know you now. Yeah, ex I, exactly. Actually, Ichimoku brought us here, right? Brought me here to connect with you guys. So I really thank you for Ichimoku <laughs> for having this opportunity for me. Yes, we understand Japanese philosophy. The mentally behind Ichimoku is very important, I think. Yeah, m the philosophy behind Ichimoku and also mental part is uh, very important. And I think that's because it's based created in Japan. And also Ichimoku Sanjin talks about lots of like uh, the wisdom or the truth about the market on this original book. So I will be introducing those ones too. But it's like a contradiction, right? Like sometimes when, when you talk about the philosophy or when you talk about like the wisdom, right? It doesn't get to the point, right? It doesn't give you the white or black answers, right? It's like a gray answer always, right? So sometimes it might confuse you, but um, I think that's uh, very important to know, to see the chart that way. Like uh, it, it actually effective to create the scenarios. Like like in my past video, I was talking about the conditional branch thinking. Like you have to always ask yourself if question, right? If the market goes up, then what would you do, right? And if the market goes down, what would you do? You have to create the, those scenarios, right? Always. And actually it branches out, right? So for example, like when you say it's a buy, when you, when you say the market is going to be go up, and what will be the next scenario, right? What will be the next pushback is going to be happening? You have to always think like that, right? And what if the, the price breaks the recent high upwards? These are kind of the scenarios that you have to create immediately after you look at the chart because if you don't do this, then you have to, um, you know, you're going to regret the result afterwards because I think you're biased. You get biased towards one side of the direction on only one of the scenarios and you cannot deal with it. You cannot deal with the movement when it's happening the way you were not expecting. You can expect like uh, up or down. It's, you know, you can just expect either way. But the thing you have to remember is you have to always create scenarios, right? If it's goes up, then what's gonna happen, right? If it goes up and if the, if the price breaks the recent high upwards, then what's gonna happen, right? You have to think like that. And if it goes down, then what, what's gonna happen next, right? You have to think about those scenarios to be able to expect the un unexpected future in the market. And actually those Ichimoku 3 theories will be a great help to be able to create this, those kind of scenarios. And that's why I think it's profound. All right, I got some comments here. All right, range, range, uptrend, range. All right, I've got lots of range comments here. So nobody's thinking it's a downtrend, right? <laughs> Just to make sure. There are a lot of studies on Ichimoku here in France. Wow, okay, didn't know. Interesting, people have made many observations and found techniques from scratch. Cool, cool. Yeah, I've, uh, I've actually got the message from uh, the countries in Europe, like France or uh, England and Poland. Yeah, lots of uh, different places in Europe too are interested in uh, Forex uh, Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and that's something that I never expected <laughs> to be honest so I am very grateful to be able to you know do this kind of live streaming here from Japan. All right so this one right here gold daily it's a range uh, just by looking at this Ichimoku Kinko Hyo it's a range because uh, Kumo is all uh, in parallel horizontal uh, Kumo is moving horizontal right and also uh, these uh, other three lines are interacting with these candlesticks. It's horizontal. Uh, price action wise, 
up to this candlestick right here up to here it's been uptrend right and from this candlestick right here uh, it broke the recent low downwards first time and then it broke the second recent low like here downwards right from this high right here so from this candlestick right here the market is became in a range and it's uh it's been consolidating for uh for days now for about like uh, four four months not much volatility right? so what we can expect is that the uh, first of all because this high is important we can expect that the market uh actually there's a barrier here there's a sell barrier here sell energy sell orders here so when the price actually touches on this price level most likely it's gonna uh, be resisted a couple of times uh, that will be one of the expectations because this high is the one that broke the recent low downwards and that's why this is the important high so when you think about the highs let's say this one this high right here to me this is not really important because it didn't break the recent low downwards right but rather uh, this low is more important all right this low right here is more important than this one because this is the one this is the low that broke the recent high upwards and that that confirms that there are lots of uh, buy energy on this price level and that's why when you draw a line like this uh, it tends to be uh, supported on this uh, on this price level so similarly on this uh, price right here because from on this high first of all the market actually finished the uptrend so it's remarkable and also uh, from this high right here the market broke the recent low downwards so that's going to be another confirmation that there will be a sell barrier here right there are sellers in the market and that's why i said if the price actually touches on this price next time most likely it's going to be resisted how about this one um, if you look at this high right here on this daily chart and you would draw a line like this right horizontal line because there's a high here, right? There's a high. There's a rejection here once, once, right? Before it's uh, important. Maybe you might you might think like that, but actually, this is to me this is not really important because the reason is again on this high, the market didn't break the recent low downwards. It just stopped here and keeps going up. So this high is not really important. Right here looks like it's been supported like twice, but uh, to me in this case, I wouldn't actually trust this line right here but rather i would uh, trust the line of this low here because this is a low that broke the recent high upwards and that's why this is more important let me just read some comments here just broke the flag pattern and it's a kumo breakout yeah it looks like it's breaking out but again kumo is horizontal right so even if the price actually breaks the kumo upwards it doesn't mean anything in this in this case I think is uptrend because uh, Chikou Span just broke the price. Oh, this one, right? If the Chikou Span breaks the recent high, like on this price level, recent high upwards, if the Chikou Span breaks it towards this way, then this is significant. But just because the uh, Chikou Span breaks this lower like price levels here, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's not really significant in this case. Uptrend all Ichimoku point up. Yeah, Ichimoku, yeah, Kinko Hyo everything is pointing up but again kumo is horizontal you have to look at the kumo's angle like look at this one like right here this is kumo is going up right but look at this one this is horizontal so that means even if the market looks like uh, right now it broke the kumo kijun sen tenkan sen gold crossing right here so yeah this is another signal bullish and chikou span is uh, kind of above these candlesticks oh it's bullish maybe you might think like that but you have to check the cloud the kumo's direction and you have to recognize that this is horizontal unlike here uh, this is a clear uptrend but in this case this is still in a range right kumo suggests it's still in a range that means it might be resisted here and the price might go back down to this price level and it's gonna go up and down maybe that will be uh one of the expectations here so if the kumo when the kumo is actually horizontal then you have to know that it's still in the range and you have to prepare for it the range market momentum here 